We're here in lovely Lunenburg County, and we all know that Lunenburg is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, founded in 1753. Beautiful place. But there's much more to Lunenburg than just this beautiful, stately town. There's amazing hiking, kayaking, and a number of other things to actually do here in Lunenburg County. We're actually here in Blue Rocks, which is just outside of Lunenburg. And we're gonna go paddling today with Carl and Pleasant Paddling. And we're gonna go through this archipelago of islands, which you can see in the distance. So, should be a good day. We met with Carl, who went through the standard safety brief some proper paddling techniques, and soon we are off to explore this coastal gem. We're now in the water out with uh, Pleasant Paddling and Carl leading the way. And you can clearly see the difference between being inland where it's nice blue sky over here and just off to our right is the open ocean and it's all gray sky. So, major influence from the Atlantic on this particular part of the province. As we paddled throughout the islands, we couldn't help but notice the many fishing shacks lining the water's edge. This is more of a, a storage building for the fishing industry. So a guy fished out of here. His house is here, there's a barn back there. The last time that someone was living here was around the 60s. And uh, there's even records in the building from his fishing season about how much money he made each season. But this, this is part of the larger communities out here. So there was at one point a school, there was uh, boat builders, there was a general store which is still extant. And then there, there was even a gas station at one point, purely for boats. On the island? Yeah, so there's no vehicles wow. out here. Uh, there was just a series of walking paths from here out to the main island. Well, we, we've landed on Big Crow Island. And I like landing here, it's got a really cool rock formation. So it's almost, it's straight and it almost feels like a roadway. Um, there's a lot of this yellow lichen on it, which adds to the, uh, the unworldly effect. Thanks Carl for taking us out today, it was a great day for paddling. But I've always been, um, I'm in interested in knowing why do you live in this particular part of Nova Scotia and why open up a paddling business? Right. Um, I actually was working in sales before I did this. I sold photocopiers for Xerox. Really? And I needed to get out. <laughs> I and don't blame you. So, uh, I, yeah, this is the, this location and a lot of this stuff is happenstance and luck. And so I feel pretty fortunate to end up in this amazing paddling area. But it was really me running away from the corporate world. Like, I had to get outside. And I've always really had a passion uh, to go outside. And so I really wanted uh, to try to share that passion with the public, and try to make something that I could take people and show um, the beautiful parts of this province. Well, I, I think this is a beautiful spot and I think you have a great business, so. Thanks. Thanks again for taking us out. Yeah, no problem. Nice seeing you again. Yeah, you as well. All right. currently at the doorstep of the, the old blacksmith shop which is now the ironworks distillery we've been invited by Pierre one of the owners to actually go in try some of the the product go into the back room where the barrels are held and actually they have a new room that they're going to open up to the public very soon and he's going to take us back there and tell us a little bit about the history of the building about ironworks and a little history about himself as well so let's go check this out it's gonna be awesome Here. Morning. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Thanks for having us at Ironworks. Well, welcome to Ironworks. So we're going to try some of the product here in, in the Ironworks distillery, which is world renowned now. They've won international awards and I think we should make our own history right now. So let me introduce you to Brigitte. Brigitte is our German made still, made in the Black Forest. 
which is a region where for generations they've been distilling fruit, lots of fruit grown. So when we started Ironworks, we wanted to very much focus upon all of the good things grown in Nova Scotia and Nova Scotia's heritage of, of uh, fruit, and we wanted a, a still made in that region. So where are you going now? We call the pig pen. And when the uh, blacksmiths were running the place, they actually kept pigs in here. Pierre briefly educated us on the aging of the spirits and the importance of charred oak barreling. We were then invited to experience the latest addition to the distillery, a new space lined with barrels that will be used for functions and special occasions. We tried many of their spirits which ranged from rums, vodkas and flavor liqueurs, while Pierre shared stories of the process behind creating some of their unique products. We tried to devise a product that we thought that would reflect that on that history of Lunenburg and would also be something unique that nobody else, at least no other sane distiller would ever try. So we built a boat and it's out in the harbour and it lives in the harbour uh, 365 days a year and uh, it has 24 barrels of rum on it. So the theory is um, that the movement of the barrel will encourage the interaction between the spirit and the wood. And so far it's definitely turned out to be that. So we are the only distillery in the world that has a rum boat, a, a floating aging warehouse for its rum. One of the great things about Lunenburg is that everything is within walking distance. You're never far from the sea, and better yet, seafood. So in true Nova Scotia fashion, what started off as kind of a cloudy overcast morning has gotten really warm. It's now 23, 24 degrees, sun is shining, not a cloud in the sky, and we're gonna go feast on a medley of seafood at the Half Shell. Here we are at the, the, half, the Half Shell in lovely Lunenburg on a beautiful sunny day. Um, we've been blessed to have this beautiful array of food, the seafood, and we're going to ask Desmond, the, uh, the chef here, um, where did this all come from? Alright, so the seafood comes from all over. We have Jonah Crab Claws from Digby. We've got the lobster, which has come from Shelburne. We've got Sober Island oysters from just north of Halifax, sustainable peel and eat shrimp from Vietnam, and we got some clams from up the north shore of Nova Scotia. We got our local haddock chowder, the haddock comes from down Lockport, and then we got our fish and chips, same haddock, the best, fresh, always good to go. Love it. So you can easily say that Nova Scotia is a mosaic of geological natural wonders and here in Lunenburg County that is no exception to the statement. So we're actually going to do our hike in Gaff Point and believe it or not there are petrified trees right in the cliffs and actually a chunk of ancient petrified seafloor that has been exposed to the surface. So pretty amazing stuff um, and if you didn't know what you were looking for you could easily walk right by it. looking at here is one of many orchids that are found in Nova Scotia. This is known as the Lady Slipper. Uh, the Mi'kmaq people, our First Nations, actually knew it as the moccasin flower. And it is on the endangered species. It is making a great comeback here in Nova Scotia, but every two or three years you start to see them kind of replenish themselves and start growing amongst the uh, forest floor. We took a side trail to a little known cove where we rappelled down to what the locals referred to as the secret beach. It's always good to live outside your comfort zone every once in a while. Makes you feel alive. So what you're looking at here in these cliffs is actually, they're petrified trees. So these would have been prehistoric trees that around 300, 280 to 320 million years ago, there was these two plates coming together, the Avalon and Magoma plates. And when that was happening, many of these giant trees were falling down and being caught in between them, being sandwiched in between. So you probably notice as we did our hike, 
Um, you notice along the coastline, along these cliffs, you see a lot of, of residue from calcium and a lot of iron. So these trees would have fallen down and basically they would have been petrified over tens of thousands of years. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Check us out next time as we explore the world's highest tides at Birdcoat Head Park and a thrilling ride on the Shubenacadie River with the folks at Tidalboar Rafting Resort. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, like, and share to follow along on the next adventure.